In a previous video, I attempted to dispel the digital audio stair step myth and prove that a 16 bit depth and a 44.1 kilohertz sample rate is just as good as higher resolution formats for audio playback. But that video was about audio playback. There are still several reasons why professionals utilize greater bit depth and higher sample rates during the music production process. In a music playback scenario, the dynamic range of the audio is fixed. So the 96 dB of dynamic range provided by 16-bit audio is more than enough, assuming the peaks are reasonably set, and this is the case for any properly mastered recording. However, in music production, we are constantly manipulating the gain and dynamic range of the various audio recordings that make up that final mix. 24-bit audio, the industry standard for recording, offers considerably more headroom with a lower noise floor, making the whole process much more convenient for recording engineers. To understand what I mean here, it may be helpful to consider the mindset of a recording engineer back in the days where we recorded to magnetic tape. Tape had much higher noise floor than today's digital systems. So engineers were always walking the fine line between setting the gain too high or too low while recording an instrument. Setting the gain too high would result in distortion of the signal as the level exceeded the upper limitations of the tape. But if the gain was set too low, the quietest parts of the recording would have been buried within the noise floor of the tape. Then, if any dynamic range compression were used on that tape recording, the noise floor would become even higher. And this was a real problem, especially when you started stacking several tracks of tape together. To deal with this problem, engineers had to set the levels as high as possible to minimize the noise floor while avoiding an undesirable level of distortion. With 16-bit digital audio, the noise floor is already much lower than even the best tape machines. For comparison, the signal to noise ratio of the Studer A820 is 77 dB RMS A weighted. However, the somewhat pleasing saturation that occurs when you exceed the limits of tape has now been replaced by the much less musical sound of digital clipping that occurs when you exceed 0 dB full scale in a fixed point digital system. Modern workflows also allow for much more processing, where hundreds or thousands of operations can be performed on a single signal. And the noise associated with this processing again begins to stack up throughout the process of mixing a song. So it's still somewhat important to set relatively high input levels when recording in a 16-bit system, except now the consequences of underestimating the peak levels of the input are much more disastrous. Using 24-bit audio offers you an even more ridiculously low noise floor of 144 decibels. So you can set the levels with more headroom to avoid clipping and still rest assured knowing that the noise floor is low enough as to not be an issue later on while processing the audio. In fact, some systems even allow for 32-bit floating point where temporarily exceeding 0 dB full scale won't result in clipping. So there certainly is a case for recording, mixing, and mastering with a bit depth beyond 16 bits. The case for using higher sample rates is a bit more controversial and subtle. It has almost entirely to do with a concept unique to digital audio called aliasing. You may recall from my previous video the idea of the Nyquist frequency. The Nyquist frequency is the highest frequency that can be completely sampled by a digital audio system, and it's defined as exactly half the sample rate. So, a sample rate of 48 kilohertz allows for capture and playback up to a 24 kilohertz sound wave, which is plenty for audio playback because we can only hear up to 20 kilohertz. Aliasing occurs when a digital audio system attempts to encode frequencies beyond Nyquist. Dan Worrell has one of the best videos on this that I've ever seen, and I'll leave a link below if you want to check it out. But basically, if the frequency of an audio signal exceeds 24 kilohertz when using a 48 kilohertz sample rate, it will cause lower frequency artifacts that seem to reflect back downward into the audible range. This means our equipment needs to filter out all of the frequencies that exceed the Nyquist frequency before converting the signal to digital. The problem is that creating an analog low-pass filter that's steep enough to remove all of the frequencies above Nyquist without affecting the frequencies within the audible range is quite difficult. And this is where higher sample rates come into play. 
If we increase the sample rate from 48 kilohertz to 96 kilohertz, our Nyquist frequency becomes 48 kilohertz instead of 24 kilohertz. Likewise, increasing the sample rate to 192 kilohertz moves the Nyquist frequency up even further to 96 kilohertz. And that extra octave or two of space between the top of the audible range at 20 kilohertz and the Nyquist frequency means that a much more gradual analog anti-aliasing filter can be used, which is much simpler to build. Oversampling is not only useful during the analog to digital conversion, but it also comes into play during the mixing process. In Dan Worrell's video with FabFilter that I mentioned a moment ago, he demonstrates a few common mixing techniques that may result in aliasing, such as saturation and heavy compression. When you saturate a signal or in any way clip the top of a waveform, you create higher frequency harmonics of that fundamental frequency. For example, using saturation on a 50 hertz sine wave may result in harmonic frequencies at 100 hertz, 150 hertz, and so on. This occurs in both the digital and the analog domain. However, when you begin saturating already high frequency signals, these harmonics can easily exceed the Nyquist frequency of even a 192 kilohertz sample rate session. Running your whole session at 192 kilohertz places four times the processing load on your computer compared to a 48 kilohertz session. That means every EQ, every compressor, every gate, everything has to work four times harder. So running your whole session with a higher sample rate doesn't come without cost. That's why many plugins utilize internal oversampling, where you can run your session at a more modest sample rate and only oversample when needed by engaging the 2x, 4x, or a higher oversampling within a specific plugin. Check out the next video that's on your screen now to learn more.